Lesson 29 has two parts. The first part is on multiplying fractions, and the second part is on reducing fractions by dividing by common factors. Now, one thing you're going to be doing in this lesson is getting away from using the manipulatives quite so much. I mean, you don't want to have to pull out your bag of manipulatives every time for the rest of your math lessons just to figure out a fraction problem. So we're going to try to get away from those a little bit more today. If you need to use them, go ahead and use them. But keep in mind that you're trying to stop using your fraction manipulatives quite so much and just learning some more mathematical ways to work with fractions. Now I have on the board there two half circles. And you should understand by now that if you added those two together, half plus half, that would equal two halves, which would equal one. Now we could also multiply those fractions. There's two half circles there, so we could say two times one half. And what we can do there, whenever we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators together, then multiply the denominators together, and then we reduce that if we need to. Now what you can do, if you have a whole number like a 2, you can just write it 2 over 1. Any whole number, you can change it to a fraction by just putting a 1 in the bottom or the denominator. And so now we can just do the numerator, 2 times 1 is 2, over 1 times 2 is 2. And see, we get the same thing as when we added it, which, of course, is what we would expect. Adding half twice is the same thing as multiplying half by 2. Now, let's say we just wanted a quarter of a circle. We wanted to do a multiplication on that. Well, just think about what we just did. To get to do a multiplication problem with those two half circles, we multiplied half by 2. To do a multiplication problem to get a quarter, that's basically saying half of a half. And so we'd multiply half of a circle by a half. So we have 1 half times 1 half, and that equals 1 quarter. Again, we multiply the numerators together. 1 times 1 is 1. Multiply the denominators together. 2 times 2 is 4, 1 fourth. So that seems kind of weird to think about, that that's how we actually get a smaller number when we multiply half times half. But we can see that that worked. Just like when we multiplied 1 half 2 times, 1 half times 2, we get one whole circle. If we multiply half half a time, we do 1 half times 1 half, and we get a fourth of a circle. Let's do some more practice on these. Let's try 1 third times 1 fifth. Okay, again, all we would do here is multiply the numerators together. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 5 is 15. So our answer is 1 15th. Let's try another one. Let's do 2 thirds times 3 halves. Just multiply the numerators. 2 times 3 is 6. Multiply the denominators, 3 times 2 is 6. Now we know that we can reduce that to 1. Anytime the numerator and the denominator are the same, that's like saying 1, one whole item. Think about your 1 sixth fraction manipulatives. If you wanted to get those out, if you're still confused about how 6 over 6 equals 1, get them out and you'll see that 6 1 sixth pieces, those will add up to make 1 whole circle. Let's try another one. 6 times 1 fifth. Now remember what we do when we have a whole number like a 6? We make that into a fraction by just putting a 1 underneath it. Anytime you do that, that's the same thing as saying 6. 6 over 1 is equal to 6. Now we multiply the numerators together. 6 times 1 equals 6. Multiply the denominators, 1 times 5 equals 5, 6 over 5. Now we could leave that answer 6 fifths, or we could write that as a mixed number, couldn't we? 5 goes into 6 one time, 
and then we'd have a remainder of one, and so we'd write that as one fifth. So we could write it as a mixed number as well, one and one fifth. Okay, now let's try reducing some fractions by dividing by common denominators. Let's start with an example like four twelfths. Let's use that for an example. Now, if you remember back in lesson 27, you learned how to reduce fractions using your fraction manipulatives. And if you wanted to get your fraction manipulatives out, you can. But like I said earlier, we're trying to get away from using those quite so much. And so if you can, just try to think about this. Do these problems in your head. Now you can think about four one twelfth fraction manipulatives and think about what other fraction piece that those would fit into. And that would be one third. And so we know that four twelfths equals one third. Now what we're going to learn today is to reduce these using a common denominator or common factor. Now we have a 4 and a 12 there and they're both even numbers so we know that they are both divisible by 2. That would be a common factor for both of them. And so what we would do is just say 4 divided by 2 that equals 2 and then we'll just put our fraction bar there 12 divided by 2 that is equal to 6 so we end up with 2 over 6. Now that's not one third though. We know that that's the most reduced form of 4 twelfths. So let's just keep doing this. 2, we still have two even numbers, right? 2 and a 6. So we could divide those by 2. 2 divided by 2 equals 1. And then 6 divided by 2, that equals 3. So now we have 1 third. So this is another way of reducing fractions. We reduce them by a common factor. We wouldn't reduce the numerator and divide by 2 and then divide the denominator by 3 or 4 or some other number. They both have to be divided by the same factor. Now if you remember back in lesson 20 we talked about the greatest common factor. That's the factor that's the largest one, the largest number that both numbers have in common. And for 4 twelfths, the greatest or largest common factor for both 4 and 12 is a 4. And so what we could have done to start with, instead of dividing both by 2 and then doing 2 again, notice that 2 times 2 equals 4, we could have divided the numerator by 4, that equals 1, and then divided the denominator by 4, 12 divided by 4 is 3, and that would have equaled 1 third. So that's what you want to do on these problems. You want to try to divide by the greatest common factor. Now watch this. One way you can always check your answer to see if you did divide by the greatest common factor or not is just take the 4 and the 1 here in your answer. Multiply those together. 4 times 1. That equals 4. That gets you back to your original numerator. And then do the 4 and the 3 in the denominator, multiply those together, 4 times 3 does equal 12. That should get you back to your original denominator. If it does, then that tells you that you have reduced correctly. Now, you may not have divided the numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor. That's not telling you that. It's just telling you that you reduced correctly basically that you did your multiplication and your division correctly. Why don't we do some more practice on reducing fractions using a greatest common factor. Let's try reducing 6 eighths. Now some of these you can probably do in your head. Maybe you already know, oh well 6 eighths is 3 fourths. Well let's find a greatest common factor for both of those. And they both have a 2 in common. That would be the greatest common factor. So let's divide the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. 6 divided by 2, that equals 3. And then 8 divided by 2 is 4. And so that would be our reduced form. 
think about your fraction manipulatives in your head too if you want to. You can think of the six one-eighth pieces and think, well, what could I fit into six one-eighth pieces that would be a smaller fraction? Well, I know that two one-eighth pieces is equal to one-fourth, so if I had six one-eighth pieces, that would be the same as three one-fourth pieces or three-fourths. Let's try another one. Let's try eight over four. Now let's think of a greatest common factor. They're even numbers, so they are both have a two as a factor. They could both have a four as a factor too, right? Remember, if you get stuck on finding the greatest common factor, you can just write down all the factors for each one. Like eight, you can say one times eight, two times four. And so you have one, two, four, and eight. And then for four, you can do one times four and two times two. So just a two there. And then you can see that four is the greatest common factor. So if you ever get stuck, remember you can do that. Just write all the factors out and then just pick the greatest one. So we'll divide the numerator by 4 and the denominator by 4 here. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And now we have 2 over 1. We don't usually want to leave an answer like that, 2 over 1, because we know that any time the denominator is 1, it's just a whole number. And so we can just write that answer 2. Let's try one more. 15 over 45. Now, those seem like some pretty big numbers there. Let's just write down some common factors. 15, 1 and 15. 1 times 15 is 15. 3 times 5, and that's all. 45. 1 times 45. 3 times 15. 5 times 9. And that's it. So our greatest common factor there is 15. They both have a 15 in common. So we'll divide above and below by 15. don't have to write continue that fraction bar out like I just did, but if you want to, that's fine. 15 divided by 15 is just 1. 45 divided by 15, that would be 3. Since 3 times 15 is 45, 45 divided by 15 equals 3. And so there's our reduced form of 15 over 45, 1 third. So if you do get stuck on these trying to find the greatest common factor, just write out all the factors for e the numerator and the denominator. It may take you an extra 20 seconds or so, but it'll save you a lot of time in the long run, especially if you, if you got the problem wrong because you didn't write them all out and you got the wrong common factor. Now, if you are still struggling with some of your multiplication and division, you probably want to do some of those multiplication and division facts practice forms that are in your test booklet. And that will really help you speed up your abilities and your memorization of multiplication and division. Because that's really important when you're working with reducing fractions. Okay, well that's all for lesson 29.